Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jeremy from the Renegade Cutter and today I'm looking to do a little bit of a video on how to retrieve the last item of a list in Python. And if you stick around to the very end, we'll take some of the concepts we learned today and do a little bit of a challenge on them. Uh, if that sounds fun to you, stick around. Otherwise, let's dive in. First things first, we're going to need to create a list. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of continue on the penguins trend here and create a list of penguins numbers. So I'll do 87, 71, and 58. And then from here, we need to figure out how we're going to access that 58. Now, normally, if I want to access something, I can use the index directly. So in this case, index zero gives us 87. And then if we want to access the last item, index two would give us 58. Of course, we can't use two all the time, right? Because if nums contained another player, then we wouldn't be able to get that last item with two. Instead, we'd have to change the number to be whatever, you know, in this case, three, if we added an item. So the goal here is to dynamically get whatever the last item in the list is. One way to do that is to take advantage of the fact that we know what the length of nums is. Len here is going to return the length of the numbers list. In this case, it's three, and we know the index we want is two. So if we do this minus one, we'll get the last index of the list. So the first solution is to take advantage of that fact. So we'll go ahead and take nums, and then we'll take len of nums minus one, and that will give us 58. Of course, there's a lot to be desired with this solution, but it gets the job done. Since we're working with lists, there's actually a lot of functions at our disposal here. For example, if we go ahead and add the dot here, you can see all the sort of methods that are available. So we could append to this list, we can clear this list, we can copy this list. There are a lot of options here. But the one I want to appoint to is pop, which is actually going to remove, if you read the description, the item at the last index which you can actually pass an index here, but if you read the description, default is gonna return the item at the last index. So here we have our solution. Now, there's a bit of a risk here because nums no longer has 58 in it. So if you choose to retrieve the last item, be aware that nums.pop is going to remove 58 from the list, uh, and then you'll have to add it back if you want it to go back. So now nums has 58 back in the list. But this is another solution. It just comes with that risk that it will modify nums if you choose to use it. Now, up to this point, there were hardly any elegant strategies. For one, our original solution required us to do a bit of a math calculation. And then the second solution required us to actually modify the list. So our third solution is going to take advantage of something called negative indexing. And if you come from maybe a C or Java-like language, uh, this is going to seem kind of wild. But what you can actually do in Python is you can insert a negative one, and this is going to wrap around on the back side of the list and give us 58. And you can actually extend this concept even further. You can do negative two up to negative three, uh, and then if we do a negative four, we actually go outside the range of the list. But you get the idea. We can actually index this array backwards if we wanted to without actually flipping the array or, or doing anything like that. All in all, I think this is the most elegant solution. And then when we get to performance, you might see that it's also the fastest solution. So this is usually my go-to. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a fourth solution to this problem. While negative indexing is usually my go-to, there's also this thing in Python called iterable unpacking. And unfortunately, the syntax is a little weird. So I'm just going to write it out, uh, and then we'll take a look at it. So this line right here, if we take a look at it, is setting nums equal to two variables on the left side. And what you'll see here is sort of this rest variable and then this last variable. And if we just print them out, you get an idea of what's going on. Rest is going to run all the way up until last. So in this case, it's going to grab 87 and 71. And then last is going to be the placeholder for the last variable in the list. Now that name last doesn't have any meaning in Python. It's just the way that this is structured. So we can actually reverse the order and do something like this. And now first is going to contain the first item, and rest will contain all the rest of the items. Now, again, this rest has no meaning. It all depends on how this iterable is ordered. So we can actually order this 
this way, where we do first rest and last equals nums. First will contain the first item, rest will contain the middle items, and then last will contain the last item. So you can see anytime we put the star, it's basically just going to fill in the space uh, where these concrete variables aren't. So we could change nums and run the same line. So maybe we want nums to be equal to 87, 71, 58, and then Jake Gensel. And then we'll go ahead and run that same line again. And rest will contain 71 and 58. First will contain 87, sorry. And last will contain 59. Uh, so you can get the idea uh, that this structure allows you to get the last item of the list. Now this syntax is pretty powerful, uh, but I haven't personally used it a lot. So if you know of anyone or you personally use this, uh, feel free to share some of the use cases below in the comments. I'd love to see some examples. All right, well at this point I always like to do a little bit of performance testing. So let's go ahead and build up our strings. And I'm going to use this new string here. Before I finish here, I wanted to point out that uh, for the pop solution, uh, we're not going to be able to test it directly because pop actually modifies the list. Uh, so we're going to append back. So sort of take this test with a grain of salt. Otherwise, the rest of the tests look pretty good. All right, so we have all of our strings. The only thing left to do is actually perform the testing. So I'll go ahead and start my testing. Uh, and I'm actually in the process of writing an article about how I perform this testing. So when I get that article written, uh, I'll share that link in the description. And then I'll also probably make a video, which I'll share at the end here. All right, so there you have it. I have all four tests executed. So in this case, we imported the time at library. And then I ran the iteratable unpacking solution first. Then I ran the negative indexing, uh, the popping, and the calc calculation, which actually does the length calculation. Uh, and in this case, you can see that the one I usually opt for, which is the negative indexing, is the fastest. Um, and the iterable unpacking, which is an impossible word to say, is actually the slowest. Uh, otherwise, I would take the popping solution with a grain of salt. This is probably a little bit faster than it appears. Uh, and then clearly the hand calculating is about three times slower than just running negative indexing. But as always, you have to take some of these with a grain of salt. Um, if you're not familiar with how these work, this is going to run each test a million times uh, and then run that same test three times. So this will run for three million iterations, come up with three scores, and then I report the lower bound. So each of these is the lower bound score. So as always, sort of just take that with a grain of salt. All right, before I forget, the last thing I was going to share with you in this video is the challenge. So we've already covered how to get the last item of a list. My question is, can you use these same techniques to say, get the last item of a string? So for example, you have this string, and we know that the length of the string can be given by this value. And we know that strings can be indexed the same way as lists. So we know we can get the last item of a string in the same way that we can get it from a list, at least using the length and the index. Um, but what other methods are there? Uh, and I'll actually share the negative indexing solution, which still works in this case. Um, and I've actually shown that in my article. So, But my question is, are there other ways to solve this problem? And do all four solutions from this video still work? Uh, and if you have an answer to that, feel free to share it in the comments. All right, well, all I have left for you is the usual YouTuber plea. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, even hit the bell. That'd be great. Uh, anything you can do to sort of show YouTube that this is great content and that you'd like others to see it. Uh, the channel's been growing pretty quickly. I'm pretty happy about that. I haven't been making videos as often as I would have liked, but to only have five videos out there and already to have uh, subscribers in the teens, that's great. Uh, otherwise, if you'd like to help monetarily support this project, I do have a Patreon. I'll link that in the description. Uh, and of course, you'll see the names of my current patrons on the left there. Right now, I'm writing spotlight articles for my patrons. So if you look at that list, Robert already has an article. I wrote his about a year ago. And then Anders just got his article from Type Trail Media. So if you'd like to have an article of your own, feel free to hop on over to Patreon, uh, toss me a couple bucks, fill out the survey, and then I'll write an article about you. 
Uh, once again, I'm featuring some more art in the background. If you want to find out who produced that art, you can check it out in the description. Otherwise, that's all I've got. Uh, thanks again.